Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss the voltage regulation of synchronous generator using EMF and MMF methods. So basically, the voltage regulation is defined as the measure of the percentage change. It is the measure of percentage change in terminal voltage from no load to full load with respect to its full load terminal voltage. So this is your voltage regulation where E node is a no load terminal voltage. V is the full load terminal voltage and uh, you can see the voltage regulation is expressed in percentage so I have multiplied it with 100. So you can define the voltage regulation it is a measure of the percentage change because I have multiplied with 100 it has become percentage. So percentage change in terminal voltage from no load to full load with respect to its full load terminal voltage that is your voltage regulation and this voltage regulation is defined when the load is thrown off and when the speed and the field current remains same or remains constant speed and field current remains same or constant and the magnitude of this change that is the change in no terminal voltage from no load to full load that is the magnitude of this change is dependent on both your load current as well as the power factor of the load so many of we see that the change in voltage at the terminal end is dependent only on the load current but remember this the magnitude of this change is dependent not only on the load current but is also dependent on the power factor and this voltage regulation can be positive and negative it will be positive for the uh, lagging loads or lagging power factor and this vr will be it is positive for lagging mode lagging loads and for the leading loads for the leading loads this will be negative way your e naught that is the no load terminal voltage will be less than this full load terminal voltage in the leading loads and your voltage regulation will be negative so it is in the leading power factor the voltage regulation is negative and in the lagging power factor the voltage regulation is positive because here your e naught is greater than v and here your e naught is less than v because of this it can be positive and negative and now when the load is thrown off so when the load is thrown off that you have, that means you have removed the load then there will be the increase in terminal voltage and similarly when you when the full load is applied or uh, suppose first case is when the full load is thrown off you have removed the load then the terminal voltage will increase and when you have applied the full load the terminal voltage will decrease but the increase and the decrease in the terminal voltage is not in the same proportion. Remember this thing, the increase and the decrease in terminal voltage is not in the same proportion as when the full load is thrown off and when the full load is applied. So the magnitude of the change in terminal voltage is not same or you can say the increase or decrease in the terminal voltage is not same as you as when the full load is thrown off or when the full load is applied. So these are the things kept to be in mind. Now why voltage regulation is required here? So the voltage regulation is required for three purposes. One is to know the range of the field excitation required. So required field excitation can be known by your voltage regulation. By knowing the voltage regulation you can able to know the required field excitation and you can able to know the magnitude of the torque angle or the load angle and you can able to know the performance of the machine when operating in parallel performance of machine when operating in parallel so these are the three things which the voltage regulation can say you about for these three purposes the voltage regulation of synchronous generator can be found and um, if you see the equivalent circuit of the synchronous generator basically this is your field circuit and here you are having the dc supply source Okay, IF is the field current flowing here and basically this is your no load or you can say the generated voltage per phase E naught. This is E naught. This is E naught. So basically this is your rotor and this is your stator. So where I have shown three phases and where E naught is the generated EMF per phase and here we are having the effective armature resistance and this is your leakage reactance and here I have shown in the no load. 
So in the no load, we do not consider we do not consider the fixtures here armature, re uh, armature reactants because that XAR which we have quantified as the voltage drop due to armature reaction is dependent on the nature of the load. So as we do not have as we have no load here, we are not concerned with the armature drop voltage drop. Now if I take a per phase values and I draw the equivalent circuit for each phase. So then it will be I will be having here E node and this will be your effective armature resistance and this will be your leakage reactance. So this is at no load and this is your E node, this is RE, this is XL. So here as there is no current flowing through this circuit there will be no drop in this, imp uh, there will be no drop in this impedance. So the terminal voltage here it will be equal to E naught at no load. So you can see at no load your terminal voltage E naught will be equal to V where if I say V is the voltage at the terminal and E naught is the generated EMF your generated EMF per phase will be equal to the terminal voltage per phase. But when you have applied some load now let me consider there is a load. So when you have applied load your circuit changes to a little extent. So similarly this will be your E naught and you will be having the armature effective armature resistance this will be your leakage reactance and uh, there will be a fictitious armature reactant which comes into effect when you have applied a load and uh, the voltage that appears across this load is the terminal voltage and this is the generated emf these are all in per phase we have we are talking in per phase so this is your re this is xl this is xar and uh, XL plus XAR gives you the synchronous reactance. So basically when you have applied a load there will be depending on the load there will be increase or decrease in the load, uh, voltage that is the terminal voltage. So the change in the percentage change in terminal voltage from no load to full load with respect to its full load terminal voltage is defined as a voltage regulation and we have discuss what is the purpose of voltage regulation and we have seen the equivalent circuit of the voltage regulation. Now let us see how the voltage regulation can be determined. There are various methods of determination of the voltage regulation but here in this video I will discuss these two methods that is uh, synchronous impedance method or uh, EMF method and other one is the ampere turns or MMF method. So first of all let us proceed with the synchronous impedance method that is EMF method. Now in order to find the voltage regulation by this EMF method we require the two quantities that is RE and XS and these two quantities can be obtained from your OCC and SCC. So that is why I have discussed this OCC and SCC in my last video where we have found the effective armature resistance per phase and the synchronous reactance per phase. So by having these two values you can find the EM that is the voltage regulation by EMF method or you can say the synchronous impedance method because impedance method we are saying because the synchronous impedance that is will be equal to under root of RE square plus XS square. Okay. So as we are concerned with these two quantities that is why we say synchronous impedance method and the EMF method because we are finding the no load terminal voltage this uh, E node which is nothing but the drop across this armature resistance and the drop across the synchronous reactance and this will be so basically this E node is balancing these drops plus this voltage that is if you apply your KVL E node will be equal to these drops plus this voltage so that is why it is also called as the EMF method and if we in, no, if we draw the phasor diagram you can see the phasor diagram for any load and for any power factor for any load any power factor you can draw the phasor diagram. So let us consider uh, the load current V i. So let us consider the load current V i and this load current is lagging behind the voltage V with the angle phi. Okay. So let us draw the phasor diagram. So if I draw the phasor diagram, so let me say this is your current load current I and this load current I is lagging behind the terminal voltage 
per face with angle phi. So this is basically your V. Okay. Now here I am having the drop. Let me say the current I is flowing. So I R is the drop, and this I R drop will be in phase with this current I. So let me draw. This is I R E, and next you are having the drop. Here it is I into X S. Here the drop is I into R E. So I into X S. It is a synchronous reactance. So reactance. When I talk, it will be perpendicular to the I R E. So it will be I X S. And uh, when you combine this, so this will be your E note. So where your E note is the no load terminal voltage. So let me draw here the triangle like this. And let me say the points. This is let me say this is O. This is A. This is B. This is C. Let me say this is D and this is E. Now from the triangle you can see you can see O C square will be equal to O E square plus E C square from the Pythagoras theorem. So let us find the value of E one from this triangle and uh, let us see how the voltage regulation can be found. So from here we have said your O C square will be equal to O E square. Plus E C square. Okay. Now your O C square is nothing but E naught square is equal to O E. Now O E will be equal to this O D plus D. E. Okay. Your O E will be equal to O D plus D. E. And your O D when you uh, find this quantity, this will be V cos phi. Your O D will be V cos phi, and this is your I R E. So basically, your O E can be written as V cos phi plus I R E square plus your E C square will be equal to. So basically, from this triangle, you can find this as V sine phi. Okay, this V sine phi is nothing but same as this. So this E C square will be equal to E B square, that is E B plus B C square. Okay, that is what I am saying here. It is uh, this is nothing but E B plus B C, that is your E C. So from here, this is V sine phi plus I X S. So this is this will be given by V sine phi plus I X S square. Okay, so from here you can see simply your E naught will be square root of this quantity. It is under root of V cos phi plus I R E square plus V sine phi plus I X S square. So you can find from the if any, if you have any given question, you can find the value of I. That is a load current. You will be given the effective armature resistance, synchronous reactance, and V is the suppose if you are given some rating. So the line voltage, if you are given uh, some, let me say some 50 kV. So the rate you can see you can see the voltage V is the terminal voltage per phase, and you will be given a line kV in the question. So basically you have to divide it. By root three, and you will get the value of voltage. So, okay. Now, the percentage voltage regulation can be defined by V R is equal to E naught minus V upon V into hundred. So, you can find V naught from this equation, and uh, your V will be given in the question. So, from here you can determine the voltage regulation. Okay, we are fine with it. Now, for the leading power factor. For the leading power factor, your phi will be negative. Your phi will be negative. Now let us see why the phi will be negative. So because if I say, uh, let me say there is some impedance here, and uh, this is the sending end bus and this is the receiving end bus. So when the power is flowing from the send, source end to the load end, your P will be positive. Okay. Now when the power will flow from the load end to the source end, the P will be negative. So similarly, your reactive power. Let me say I am having a, a inductive load here. Okay, 
If I say I am having an inductive load here, so inductive load basically absorbs the lagging loss, and the lagging loss will be supplied by your uh, lagging synchronous generator. Okay, so the power will be flowing in this direction plus Q. Now this inductive load it absorbs the lagging loss, but it delivers the leading loss. So basically, the leading loss delivered by the load to the source will be taken as minus Q. So basically. The leading power factor, okay, where the inductive load is delivering the leading was okay. So that is why whatever the quantity is leading, you will take it as negative because the phi, the Q has become negative because the phi has become negative. That is, we write V sine minus phi. It will be equal to minus V sine phi. That is. We can say your Q, Q is equal to minus V i sin phi because the phi has converted to minus phi. That is why we say for the leading power factor your phi is negative and for the unity power factor your phi will be equal to zero. So you can put those values in this uh, cos phi and sin phi. You can find the E naught value. Now the important thing here is to that. This EMF method is said as the pessimistic method because the value of the voltage regulation found here it will be always greater than the actual value. So as the value of voltage regulation found is always greater than the voltage regulation at that is actual voltage regulation this method is called as the pessimistic method now the reason for this error is because we have assumed in this method the synchronous impedance or you can say the synchronous reactance to be constant so the error is because of this assumption that the synchronous reactance or the synchronous impedance is assumed to be constant but it varies with saturation so at low saturation at low saturation the effect of armature reaction will be greater than at high saturation so at low saturation the effect of armature reaction is higher and at high saturation the effect of armature reaction is lower compared to this armature reaction at low saturation now as the armature reaction is high at low saturation there will be this reactance and there will be the higher value of excess and this low saturation is a uh, if you see in the short circuit test basically the low excitation is required to circulate the 150 percent to 200 percent of the full load current in the stator windings so at that low excitation we are having the low saturation and at low saturation the armature reaction is very high and as the xar value is very high the synchronous reactance is also very high so that is why the i can say the assumption of this synchronous reactance or the impedance is incorrect that is it is the assumption of taking constant values incorrect that is why this method always results in exact results now when it is the inexact results why we are going for this method because uh, for the non salient pole type machines with the distributed field windings remember for the non salient pole machines with the distributed field windings when there is no saturation this method theoretically yields accurate results so remember it is for non salient pole machine that is cylindrical machines with distributed field windings when saturation is not considered it this method yields theoretically accurate results okay that is why we go for this method and uh, we have seen the pros and the cons of this method there is a pro is this and the con is the assumption of the synchronous impedance of the reactance to be constant but it is not constant you can also see it from the open circuit test and the short circuit test so in the open circuit test uh, you will get curve like this and in the short circuit test the curve will be like this so if i say this is your isc and here you are having e naught so if you find here basically this is your e naught and this is your isc so the synchronous impedance will be given by e naught by isc okay now when the 
this is basically for if I say this is like this, this is linear in this range, and uh, this curve has saturated because of the iron saturation. This curve bends like this, and if you point the synchronous impedance here, so the change in voltage is very small here, but the change in current is higher here. So as the value of I s is higher change in value of is is higher to the change in value of e node so basically your synchronous impedance decreases as you move to the unsaturated that is as you move to the saturated portion the synchronous impedance decreases we also have seen here at low saturation the synchronous impedance will be higher and at high saturation where the core, iron core has saturated the armature reaction will be low and the synchronous impedance will be also low because you can also see from here at high saturation the ISC value will be increasing but the change in no load terminal voltage will be almost constant so that is why your synchronous impedance decreases. Now let us see the MMF method or the ampere turns method. So in the ampere turns, ampere turns or MMF method, MMF is nothing but the product of field current and the number of field turns. So in the MMF method, the field winding must have the MMF required to induce the rated terminal voltage on open circuit. So it does two purposes. So one is the field winding must have MMF required to induce the rated terminal voltage on open circuit and the other one is the field winding must have MMF equal and opposite to that of the armature reaction MMF. So basically MMF is to induce the rated terminal voltage and the MMF is required to overcome the armature reaction. So basically these two MMF can be found from your open circuit and short circuit test. So in the open circuit test let me say the IF1 is a field current to give the rated terminal voltage on open circuit and let me say IF2 is the field current which gives me the rated full load current or you can say the short circuit current short circuit current so let me say uh, this curve represents your open circuit characteristics and this curve represents your short circuit characteristics and let me say here I am having the axis as ISC and let me say this is your open circuit voltage and let me say first I am having V phase that is rated terminal voltage per phase and let me say if this is the at this point I am having the V phase that is the rated terminal voltage per phase corresponding to this I am having a field current IF1 ok now at this juncture let me say I am having the rated short circuit current or rated full load current so let me say this is IF2 ok so we know the values of IF1 and IF2 IF1 is to give the rated terminal voltage per phase on the open circuit and IF2 is the field current to give the short circuit current or the full load current so basically here VF is considered by taking uh, by taking the armature effective resistance as negligible so by neglecting the effective armature resistance this V phase is taken and you can also consider this as V phase plus IRE cos pi but we have neglected the uh, effective armature resistance because it is a very small value now for the short circuit test if you see in the short circuit test let me say this is short circuited here and uh, you can crank the ammeter here and ammeter here to find the field current and to find the short circuit current so basically in the short circuit current uh, let me say this is the E naught that is a generated EMF per phase and uh, if you consider it as open then this will be this generated EMF per phase will be equal to the terminal voltage per phase ok so basically this is the generated EMF per phase and this is your RE this is XL and this is XAR and let me say you are having a short circuit condition ok now this combination will give you the synchronous reactance now for the short circuit test this XL is of very small value so you can neglect it and uh, basically we know that RE value is very much smaller than the excess value so this value RE is also very small so you can neglect it now basically 
we are having only here armature reaction. Now the field current is required to overcome this armature reaction. That is, and because we have assumed a fictitious armature reactance, this is a purely inductive component. It is purely inductive, and as it is a purely inductive, we know that cos phi will be given by R upon Z, where Z is the impedance. Now, as R is zero, and uh, you will be having the cos by as zero, and we know that the inductive components will be a lagging component. So that is why you can say the circuit has become a zero lagging power factor. So in the short circuit conditions, when you neglect RE and XL, you, your field ampere turns will be completely demagnetizing ampere turns. So that is the IF is required to overcome the purely inductive armature reactance component and this is a demagnetizing because in the armature reaction of the synchronous generator you can see if you are having a resistive load then it will be a cross magnetizing effect if you are having a capacitive load it will be a magnetizing effect and if you are having an inductive load it will be a demagnetizing effect so basically the ampere turns must be demagnetizing ampere turns to overcome this armature reactance that is a fictitious armature reactance okay so basically this is operating on the zero power factor lagging circuit now let me say let the alternator be supplying the full load current at the power factor cos phi okay let the alternator be supplying the full load current at the power factor cos phi and let me see the phasor diagram so let me say the oe oe gives you the field current if1 which is required to produce the rated terminal voltage per phase or this V phase or you can say this is V plus I R A cos phi. Now as I have neglected R A here, so simply I am saying V phase only. But when you consider R A, then you can write V plus I R A cos phi. Okay, this is your I F1. Now with an angle 90 plus or minus phi, 90 plus or minus phi, you draw A B which is representing I F to give the short circuit current so this is basically this oa is representing that is a phasor oa is representing the current if1 which is required to produce the rated terminal voltage and if2 this ab is representing the field current if2 which is producing a short circuit current okay now the phasor sum of these two currents will be if okay and this if if i say the if here the phasor sum of these two components will be definitely greater than these component and each components. That is, it will be greater than IF1 and it will be greater than IF2. That is why your IF will be, I am drawing it a right side. Because it is a phasor sum of these two components and it is not a difference. Okay, so for this, if I draw it on the open circuit characteristics, you will find your open circuit EMF. Let me say this is your E0. So basically this will give you E0 this will give you V phase, this is also E0 per phase and this will give you ISC that is a short circuit current. Okay, now here we have taken this as 90 plus or minus phi but here we consider phi as 0. Okay, now your phi will be, your phi will be positive for the lagging power factor or the lagging loads and your phi will be negative for the leading power factor loads. Okay. Fine. So when you do 90 minus phi, this curve will come like this. Okay. So this will be your IF for the phi negative. Okay. That is for the leading loads, leading power factor, and for the lagging power factor, your this this will come like this. That is 90 plus phi. Okay. Or else I will draw a separate diagram. So let me say this is OE and uh, for the leaking for the lagging loads this will be this will be your 90 plus phi this is if1 if2 and this is if okay so basically for the lagging loads this is 90 plus phi and for the leading loads for the leading loads this is this angle will be 90 minus phi okay and when phi is equal to 0 for unity power factor 
you will be having a just a right angle triangle similar which appears like a right angle triangle okay now this method is called as the optimistic method optimistic method because the value of the voltage regulation which is given by a naught minus v upon v into 100 and you can find your a naught by knowing this current i of so your voltage regulation the calculation of the voltage regulation by this method will be always lower than the actual value that is why we say it is a optimistic value and the reason for being the lower value of the voltage regulation than the actual value is here the effect of excitation on the armature reaction or you can say the excitation required to overcome the armature reaction is considered on the unsaturated part of the curve. So as it is considered on the unsaturated part of the curve or you can say in the linear portion of the curve where the synchronous impedance remains constant that is why this will give the value lower than the actual value and that is why it is called as an optimistic method where the synchronous impedance or the reactance remains constant. So this is how you calculate the voltage regulation of the synchronous generator by EMF and MMF method. I hope you understood well. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.